Welcome back gamers, this is SKS, and I'm going to start a let's play of colonization, and not any colonization, but Sid Meier's colonization. This is the old school 1994 by Microprose. This is the colonization that Sid Meier and Brian Reynolds both created. A lot of people know of the current colonization that was released with Civilization 4, which is totally different than this version. This game holds a special place in my heart. It was probably one of the first two games that I own, that alongside SimCity 2000, and I would play them all the time. And a lot of people are like, what is colonization? Well, it's pretty much a game, unlike Civilization, where you start, well, a civilization to start from the beginning. This one, you actually, it's just like the start of America. You pick one of four countries, either the English, the Dutch, the French, or the Spanish. You sail to the New World, you colonize it, and then eventually your goal is to become self-sufficient country. You want to break away from them. Uh, where I teach high school, I tell my students, it's like, when you go to college, you go away from your parents. Your parents, in this case, would be the mother country. You're going to be the new world. You, st you go away, and they'll tell you, well, you need to clean your room. And at first, you're going to tell them, fat chance. But then eventually, you're going to grow up and start doing that yourself. You'll become self-sufficient. So when you become self-sufficient, you can support yourself in the new world here in colonization. You can declare independence. You have to have enough people, population who support that. Then you've got to repel the king's army. It's just like in the history books, folks. As you see the little introduction here, the music, the sounds, everything about this game reminds me of my childhood. I, there's not another net game that Sid Meier has created that probably makes me feel like a little kid again. And just, it makes me really happy for that to happen. So, we'll go on here and load the game, and I'll start going over a few things that people need to know. Now, on colonization, you could start in a new world where it randomizes. You can customize your own. Those two options are about the same. And you could start a game in America, and it would be North America and South America, and the countries start normally where they're at. Sometimes I'll go into the customized new world just to change a little, but for Let's Play sake, I'm going to leave it and just start a game in the new world. Now, on the difficulty levels, the first two difficulty levels are about the same. They're easy, easiest. Then you go up to moderate, tough, and toughest. Now, if you go and read any frequently asked questions, they will tell you these top two, and sometimes the third one. The computer will cheat heavily. I did a uh, read and watch somebody else playing it in Portuguese the other day, and he was, and it had a little translation on it, and he was talking about how he went to attack somebody in Governor, and it was at the very start of the game when you're, you only start with one soldier, and somehow the computer city already had three soldiers to defend. So for Let's Play references, so we can actually have fun and I can explain it, we're going to do the Explorer difficulty. So, my guy's a little bit wet behind the ears. I have not played this for probably over 10 years. I've played the newer version, but they're totally different. But, just for this one, I'm in a great mood today. I really want to kick some French ass. So, we're going to play on the Explorer difficulty. Now, when it comes to the European powers, you can be four countries. England, like I said, France, Netherlands, and Spain. Now, each country has its own leader and its bonuses. England has Walter Raleigh, or I should say Sir Walter Raleigh, and their bonuses is their cross production. In this game, cross production equals people that get on the docks and people want to come to the New World. As per se in history for religious prosecution, cross production on this game for England is higher, so their immigration rate to the New World is higher. Therefore, if you want to build a lot of population forts and cities, that's the way to go with it. France, I usually never play as French. They have cooperation. Probably means they surrender. But they have Jacques Cartier. And uh, he has a bonus with the natives. They have reduced tensions. They keep the peace. You can build right next door to them. When you take their land, they don't get as angry fast. Whoop-de-doo. 
the Spanish, everybody knows what happened with South America and the Indians. Uh, the Spanish have a plus 50% military bonus toward the natives. So if you attack them or their settlements, you get a 50% bonus in your attack. You have a lot of military people that come over for Spain. They're a good country to pick if you want to take over the land and you want to kill Indians for money. They're a fun group to play with. The Dutch is who I usually go with, or the Orange, the Netherlands. Um, oh, the leader for Spain was Christopher Columbus, which kind of makes little sense in that aspect, but we'll leave him on there. Uh, the Dutch, they have Michael de Ruter, and I know I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but they get a big bonus up front. For one, they get a merchantman ship, which has four slots, as opposed to the other countries who start with caravels with two. This helps out especially when their market prices don't collapse as fast as the other countries. One of the big things at the start of the game, no matter what difficulty you play, is you want fast cash. If you land next to a silver uh, mine or a silver mo node and it's got a lot of silver, you can sell that quickly. The prices for the Dutch will not collapse as fast. So if you sell a bunch right at the start and it's 19 gold per, per piece it won't drop down to 11 real quick. It will stay there longer. That's a great bonus to have. So, I guess right now we have to decide who we're going to be. I've had a hard time between wanting to do the English or the Dutch. I usually do the Dutch normally because I like the trade. I like the bigger boat on the fir at the first of it. But I'm feeling kind of great today, gamers. I mean, I've, I've had a good mood. I went out drinking last night my football team that I love to watch on TV that, that they won their bowl game so I think I'm just going to go with England here and do a population I beat this game in a couple ways I've built one city before and just made it self-sufficient and declared independence with that one city and pretty much just overran it but I've told myself that I'm going to at least make five cities we'll set it at five five cities and try to make them self-sufficient and declare independence that way. The thing you have to remember is, is in the more cities you have, the more, the harder it is going to produce the Liberty Bells to uh, get up your resistance to the king. But we'll go ahead and we'll pick England here. And uh, we're not going to be Walter Raleigh. We are going to change that to Sir SKS. And that will probably really upset the king because for one thing he has to call me by an abbreviated name excuse me okay other things we need to talk about founding fathers in this game there's five types of those exploration military political religious and trade founding fathers as you produce liberty bells in your cities you will unlock founding fathers and they give you bonuses some of the founding fathers are excellent to have for your colonization or for your colonies Others are a waste of time. You only get to choose one of five every time it pops up, so we'll go through with that. Alright, England. The age of expansion coincided with the period of religious strife in England. The Church of England, theoretically a Protestant denomination. A lot of history there. Puritans, blah blah blah, religious freedom. All this means is everybody wants to go to the New World and get away so they can live the way they want to live. And to reflect the greater flow of religious immigrants into English colonies, the English player requires only two-thirds the normal number of crosses to generate immigrants. So that will be good for us trying to grow and expand. The biggest thing you have to worry about when you start a game on colonization is where you land. If you land too close to the other European colon or colonists, you're going to be in war from the start. If you land in the middle of, say, a group of civilized Indians because there's four levels of those if you ran in front of the if you land in front of the Incans you have to deal with them because there'll be a lot so there's a lot of things at the very start that can throw your game weary so let's move on here's our king him and his nice looking dog with super long giraffe neck all right the year of our Lord 1492 an audience with the king of England for the greater glory of England, Governor, we dub thee Viceroy of the New World. Go and explore his new land, settle it, and bring wealth and glory to yourself and our nation. How nice of them. So in the year of our Lord, 1492, Sir SKS sailed the ocean blue. 
an expedition led by the great explorer, Sir SKS. It's already sounding good, folks. I always like this opening screen because it goes from nighttime and the stars, they fade away. Left to London on a voyage of discovery, and probably one of death. But like I said, I'm feeling great today. I am ready to just wallop into this game and do great. You all are going to be blessed with the commentary that I'm going to spew forth during this game. Because I will get angry. The Indians will piss me off. The French, I guarantee somehow the French will mess with me during this game. I had nightmares as a child when I would have a perfect colony going. And the French would just show up out of nowhere and then make a colony right in the middle of me. It would make me go ape shit. So gamers, you're going to see the raw side of SKS while we play this game. And this opening screen takes forever. So to cover, I'll talk about... The only thing we have to worry about at the start, like I said, is finding a good place for your first colonies. I usually build two colonies at the start. That way I can generate more items. They can be self-sufficient on their own for food. And I could sell more stuff back, because it's all about getting money in the start. Uh, and you got to wonder who you're going to run into, like I said, with colonists or the Indians. On the Indian tribes, there's four levels. There's semi-nomadic, agrarian, advanced, and civilized. The semi-nomadic are the ones who live in teepees. Those are your Apache, your Sioux, and your Tupi Indians. Um, the agrarian, they live in the longhouses. They're Arawak, Cherokee, and Iroquois. Those like to do war, it seems like, more than the others. Advanced Indians are your Aztecs. They live, live in the ziggurats, the little pyramids, kind of like the Mayans. And then your civilized that live in stone villas are the Incas. So as the game sits here for a while, what I'll do is usually when the screen gets to this, for some reason when I'm running this in DOSBox, it takes forever. So I'm going to pause the recording here I have us all set up for our adventure in the new world. So gamers, join me next time. This is SKS. I'll be signing off. Join me next time so that we can start our conquest of the new world, and we'll see how far the English go. Have a great day. I'll see you next time, gamers.